A couple of months ago, I decided to upgrade my pressure washer and went for a Kranzel K10 and this is the automatic total stop version. So I just wanted to take you through the machine and my kind of experience and thoughts after using it for the first couple of months. So I'll start by taking you through the basics on the machine. So it is actually very sort of small and compact. So it's only 44 centimeters in length, 20 in width and 33 in height, but it is actually pretty heavy and weighs in at 23 kilograms. In terms of the components, there's the water inlet on the side of the machine, which also has a filter inside it. And then on the front of the machine, there's the outlet for the hose and that is an M22 connection. There is a five meter mains cable. And what I did notice about this is that it's quite thick and robust sort of feeling and feels a lot more well-made in comparison to cheaper pressure washers that I've seen in the past. It has stainless steel valves and a brass pump. There's a pressure gauge on top and a little plastic cap that comes with it. So the glass can be protected when it's not in use. There is also a red dial on the side that can be used to adjust the pressure on this machine. And then on the opposite side, there's a little black box. And this is because this is the total stop automatic version. So whenever the trigger isn't being pulled, the motor isn't running. So I'll talk a bit more about the differences between this variant and the standard one a little bit later in the video. There's also the oil filling and draining plug as the oil needs to be changed on this machine periodically. It has a metal handle and legs which have a rubberized grip on the bottom and it also has the cooling fan on the back. So in terms of the accessories that actually come with the machine, you've of course got the hose. Now I went with a 20 meter hose, but you can also opt for a 10 or a 15 meter hose. The hose is steel braided and rubber coated and it's miles better than the stock hose that came with my Karcher machine, which was really sort of stiff and had a tendency to kink up. With this hose, that's just not an issue at all. The hose also has a built-in swivel, so that's what the grey end of the hose is for. There's a black end that is supposed to go directly onto the pressure washer. Now, in terms of the options with the gun, there are quite a few different variations that you can go for. So you can go with one where the nozzles need to be screwed in with an M22 fitting, or you can go with the quick release option, which I went for. And then you can either go with the long gun or the short gun. Now, I went for the long gun and Lance as I have an aftermarket MTM SGS35 stubby gun, which I prefer to use. So I wanted that long gun in case I needed something with a bit more reach. A couple of things to note on the differences between that MTM aftermarket gun that I'm using and the standard one is that the hose inlet on the standard Kranzel one is in front of the trigger, whereas on the MTM one, it's kind of underneath, which I think is a better placement for it personally. And also it's worth noting that although the Kranzel has that quick release system, it's not the same standard quarter inch quick release system that you see on the aftermarket gun. So you can't use the same nozzles or snow foam adapter if you wanna use the standard Kranzel gun. Hence why I swapped over to that MTM that I've been using previously, as it fits with the foam cannon and nozzles that I want to use. Now, in terms of the specifications and performance, this machine has an operating pressure of between 30 and 120 bar. And you can adjust that, like I said previously, using that red dial on the side. Now that pressure rating isn't anything particularly special, however what makes this machine perform really really well is the flow rate. So that is 10 litres per minute or 600 litres per hour, which is a huge upgrade from the Karcher K4 that I was previously using which had a flow rate of 420 litres per hour. This is what makes this machine perform a lot lot better and although the operating pressure is very similar, you can definitely feel quite a significant difference between the two of them just due to that increased flow rate. So I wanted to do a little demo showing how the machine actually sounds. So it's rated to 90 decibels and I used a little decibel meter on my phone and it was coming out at just a tiny bit below 90 depending on where it was kind of positioned around the machine. I also did this test on my Karcher K4 and this was reading just over 90. And again, there's gonna be a little bit of variation depending on where the meter is positioned. Although technically the K4 is slightly louder than the Kranzel, it does have a lower pitch, which makes it sound a little bit quieter in person, whereas the higher pitch of the Kranzel does make it sound a touch louder. So I'll stop talking for a second so you can hear the difference between the two. When the camera is positioned at pretty much the same distance and the volumes are set to the same level. So 
So in terms of the disadvantages of this pressure washer, well, the first one is that it is very expensive. With the 20 meter hose that I went for, the price is around 800 pounds for most places. I bought this during the Black Friday sales and managed to get quite a significant discount on it. But even still, it is an expensive machine, particularly when you're comparing it to the likes of Karcher, Nilfisk and Ava pressure washers. Another disadvantage is it is pretty heavy. Although at 23 kilograms, it's light enough to be able to carry around. It's certainly not the easiest and it can be a little bit awkward. And the final sort of significant disadvantage I noticed of this portable machine is that it doesn't have an integrated hose reel. So I do have to wrap that up after I finish using it, which is a little bit of a pain, but comes at the price of it being very compact. However, there are many advantages to this machine that I have noticed. First of all, the performance of it, primarily due to the very high flow rate. I feel like it does perform really, really well. Also, despite it being heavy, it is very small and compact, so it's easy to store. The trigger gun and hose in particular are really good quality. And the same can't be said for the cartridge that I previously upgraded from, where the accessories that it came with I just don't think were up to scratch. Another noticeable advantage of a Kranzel machine is that the build quality is very, very good. Now, of course, I haven't had this machine for that long, but you can tell it's incredibly well built and it's built to last for a very, very long time as long as it's taken care of. It's also serviceable and fixable and the manual gives you instructions on how to perform basic repairs. But if any larger issues crop up, the machine is designed to be fixed and parts can be replaced easily. So it can last for a really long time and there's not really going to be a need to replace the machine itself. Now, when I was first looking into which Kranzel pressure washer would be best for me, I noticed that there were several different models available and it was a little bit confusing. So I'm going to try and summarise what I learned to make it a little bit easier if you're struggling to decide which to choose. So in the professional cold pressure washer lineup, You've got the choice between the more expensive machines with an integrated hose reel or the compact portable machines. Now, out of those compact portable machines, there's actually four different versions. So there are 2K7 variants and 2K10 variants. They both run at the same pressure, but the difference between them is the flow rate. So that number, either 7 or 10, refers to the flow rate in litres per minute. So with the K10, you're getting a 40% higher flow rate, and that obviously is going to give better performance. However, the K7 is better when running from a more limited water supply and it's the option to go for if you're using a water tank and it actually has a different valve compared to the K10 to make it easier to run it from a water tank. Now, the other difference between the K7 and K10 is that the K7 has a slower motor, which means that it's quieter and also means that it has a lower power intake and output. So the K7 is better for running on a generator as it's just not as power hungry. Now, as I said, there are two variants of the K7 and the K10, and those are the automatic total stop version and the standard version. So the automatic total stop version has that little black box on the side, and whenever the trigger isn't being pulled, the motor won't be running. So the advantages of that are, of course, it's going to be quieter as the motor isn't running continuously, and it's also going to reduce the amount of power consumption. However, it's actually recommended to use a standard continuously running version if you're a mobile detailer who is running the pressure washer from a generator and that's because every time you pull in the trigger the motor will kick in and that'll cause the current to spike and wear out the generator more quickly whereas with the standard version because you're only turning it on once it's not going to put it under as much stress so the reasons that i went with the k10 total stop are because i've got no limits in terms of power and water supply i'm running it from mains power and water so I wanted the best performance that the K10 offers and I didn't want it to be running in the background. So I'll pop links in the description to the pressure washer itself and the accessories that I'm using. If you have enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could drop it a like and thanks very much for watching.